right guys what's going on it's Jack and welcome back to another video and you know since it's been a while since we had a solid quote-unquote good Call of Duty I thought I would actually do a video explaining as to what makes a good Call of Duty good and right off the bat I'm gonna use one word and then we'll go from there simplicity See, Call of Duty at its very core is actually a very simple game. It's a fast-paced, Twitch arcade first-person shooter that is really not too complex. We're talking everything from the matchmaking system, to the create a class, to the maps, to the kill streaks or score streaks, and everything in between, the customization, all that. It is actually at its core something that is very, very simple and never, ever gets too complicated. The only thing that would make Call of Duty seem complicated is depending on the skill of the player. Sometimes they'll do some really fancy movements or a couple or a combination of different things that, uh, that really separate the skill gap. They basically take the basic tools that a game has, that the game offers right in there, and what they do is they build upon that. They maximize that. They come up with things that even the developers, believe it or not, did not know about. Because the developers actually spend most of their time actually playing the game. Uh, excuse me. Developing the game as opposed to playing the game. So that's one of the reasons why it's so valued when a beta comes out, right? When it gets released into the masses. And then obviously when the full game comes out, it gets released into the masses once again. It is a big essential element because... That is what the community does. They they basically discover your game and then they break it down, really. Uh, even the developers, I remember, I think even Vaughn said at one point that uh, basically we get it out there and then people basically break it and their, and their job is to kind of put it back together, something something along those lines. So basically when you're, when you're looking at, when you're looking at things like, uh, let's start with the map design, okay? Now, a lot of people... Uh, are fans of three lane maps and for good reason it's and one of the reasons is because it's not too complicated because there's not too many lanes and it is something that can be unpredictable but is just predictable enough so that way you can at least uh have even if you're a noob you have some somewhat of an idea of where you're going that's where black ops one actually started to become really legendary is because they had a, a different uh, map design philosophy and again it's not just limited to three map three lane map designs you can have Four lanes, for instance, you can have all sorts of different unique designs, but in terms of the amount of lines of sight and the amount of buildings and things you can enter or the limitations within that building is what really separates the, the more skilled player from the non-skilled player. But at the same time, it makes things more fun because there are more engagements to be had and it kind of makes you think a little bit without going too crazy. I mean, it actually encourages you to move. And to see what works and what doesn't, and while simple, while remaining simple, while retaining its simplicity, that's one of the reasons why a lot of competitive players, and, and not just competitive players, but a lot of a lot of um, casual players as well, enjoy that cer certain uh, map design. And it is where you play, it is where everything happens, and it is a huge game changer. And designing a map is actually both simple and hard. So when you look at some of the best maps in Call of Duty history. Their map, they all have one thing in common. The maps are not really that complicated. There's a reason why maps in more recent Call of Duty games are not as popular and will never ever make, achieve legendary status. And the reason is because they are just, there's just way too much, way too much going on and way too, like, sim it's really simple, way too much going on. And if you're just, sitting around you don't really get to know and experience the fun aspect of actually having the freedom to move around due to map design and the cool thing about a simple map design is that it gives you the choice it doesn't take a choice away from you it gives you the choice on whether or not you want to move or whether you don't want to move whether you want to take this route or you want to take that route it rewards flanking. And if you don't get it right, it's okay. You still have another ch chance and you can try the other direction, stuff like that. And you can see where that takes you as opposed to having a map design philosophy of today where it's basically dead end after dead end that basically forces you to move a lot more slower. It's the good thing about a good map with Call of Duty with simplicity 
is that it encourages every single type of, of gameplay style. The only thing is, though, that if you want to succeed at that gameplay style, whether you're a rusher, whether you're a camper, or whether you're the in-between, you have to learn how to do it correctly if you want to achieve a certain level of consistency at it. And that's the beauty of it. There's a trial and error factor as opposed to something that's just given to you. And that's one of the problems that I see with today's map design philosophy. So um, that is one thing. Now, when it comes to things like the weapons or the creative class system, right? You got to have weapons that that obviously they they look good. They have good iron sights, right? At least decent iron sights. Some some Call of Duty games have better iron sights than others, there's no doubt about it. Um, and of course, a recoil pattern. I remember in Black Ops One, the weapons were really solid in Black Ops One, and uh, you know, uh, I don't except for maybe the SMGs, I don't think the assault rifles had a grip. That you can use on it and if it did most people didn't use it and the same thing goes with black ops 2 you could use the foregrip if you wanted to in black ops 2 but hardly anybody ever did because it really didn't didn't make too much of a difference it was so minute that most people just didn't use it so you have to have a weapon that feels good by default and every single attachment that you choose to put on your gun is supposed to make your gun better it's not supposed to have quote unquote pros and cons for the sake of realism or just um, favoring one play style over another due to design. Uh, it's, it's supposed to make your weapon that much more addictive. It's supposed to make you try different combinations of, uh, of attachments. Cause if there's no cons to an attachment, like there used to be, right? If there's no cons to an attachment, you, the, 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 the chances of you trying a different combination of atta attachments goes up as opposed to I'm never going to use this because there's just way too many cons, for instance, right? And again, with today's attachment philosophy, it is becoming just more complicated. It's all about simplicity, going back to that simplicity, man. So, and you can still have a ton of attachments. You can have your quick draw, you can have your stock, you can have your grip, um, you can have your, 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 your quick draw magazine, you can have your... Uh, you know, your, your long magazine. It's been so long that I don't even remember the names of these damn attachments. I mean, but you guys get the point and you can have two or three different reflex sites. You don't need 15 to 20. That's just, that's just a waste, man. Uh, get two to three different sites and that's pretty much all you need. You want to change the color of your reticle by all means, go have at it. If you want to change the design in terms of, you know, you don't like a dot and you want a three, a, a three dot predator style type of dot, by all means, go at it. So and the thing is you can always they can always add more attachments into a game. They could they could literally create new attachments and just give you a limit to how many you can get and it will actually encourage the player, not force them, but encourage them to try out a different different all sorts of different attachments and at the same time there's no pros and cons. So yet again, regardless of your playstyle, it's not punishing of your playstyle. And let's go to the next one. Score streaks. One of the big pillars of Call of Duty, right? The maps, the weapons, the score streaks. The score streaks or the streaks are something that are meant to be rewarding. So if you go on a streak, you're playing the OBJ, you're getting kills and stuff like that, and you're not dying in the process, well, you can get rewarded. You can go from lower tier to higher tier. And variety in score streaks or streaks in this case is key because you want things that are made for people that can't really get high score streaks because they're too busy playing the OBJ or whatnot. They're the, they're the person that's addicted to capturing B, for instance, in, in domination, just to give an example. And there are players like that, that actually, to this day, still truly care about playing the OBJ. So, and all they care about is getting the UAV and the counter UAV and just capping objectives and, and kills are a secondary factor for them. There are players out there like that. Uh, granted, it's not everybody, but there are players out there like that. So again, regardless of player, you know, you got to have all sorts of different streaks and you have to have ones that work correctly. So if you're going to get a UAV, it needs to show people on the map that are not using ghosts and not moving around, and, and that are, you know, that are not moving around or whatnot. Right. So, uh, or even that are moving around, they're not using ghost or the people that are using ghosts, but are not moving around because they should pop up if ghost is implemented properly. Right. So, uh, and when you have mid tier streaks, wham bam, you get rewarded with mid mid tier streaks, and then you got their high end streaks like the like the load start Black Ops two to this day is absolute king in my opinion. Now Black Ops one and Black Ops three, for instance, in Modern Warfare two, um, have also had some really good streaks. Even Black Ops four had some really good streaks, but uh, at the end of the day, you know if you get a high streak without dying, 
you should be rewarded by being able to get a badass streak that is fun to use and that will get you a bunch of kills, whether you're controlling it yourself or whether it's going to be AI controlled. It needs to be rewarding because, again, you select three streaks and it's a high risk, high reward situation because you're not going to get your streaks unless you're going to get those high. <clears throat> you're not going to get your streaks unless you get a good amount of points without dying. So it's something that absolutely needs to be an integral. And the thing is, they can actually go a step further and introduce, reintroduce the modules like they did in um, Advanced Warfare to where you can buff your streaks a little bit or give variants to streaks like they did in Infinite Warfare, which actually was a pretty cool move um, on, <clears throat> on Infinity Ward's part. So moving on to the next one, the Create a Class and Perks. The create a class and perks need to be simple and they need to be customizable so that way you can use a different combinations of classes with perks and weapons and attachments and all that for different scenarios, right? So if you find yourself in a pickle, you can always switch your classes, obviously, and those classes could be very viable. And at the same time, they could be fun to use. The perks, again, you pick three. Pick 10 was really genius. Even in Ghost, what they did, they, they almost did kind of like a different modification of a pick 10 system. But uh, even Ghost created a class system. And then we haven't had pro perks back since, what, Modern Warfare 3, if I'm not mistaken, which would actually ultimately give you six perks <laughs> because you'd unlock the pro version of the perk that you chose. So you'd have six perks. And this is one of the reasons why people love the pro perk system because obviously you're picking three, but you're getting six. Uh, so... Um, the old school COD 4, Modern Warfare 2, or COD 4 system actually, um, of picking perks, and now that they're doing Modern Warfare 2019 and 2022, it's like, it's like, no, players like variety and they like combinations, just like they do with attachments and just like they do with maps. Everything is about customization, simplicity, and, com and uh, uh, combinations, really, if you think about it, from the attachments that you use on your weapon to the way you have your entire class set up and everything. That is one of the things that has made Call of Duty the juggernaut that, that in the first place is the fact that you can customize things and change things to your liking and it would encourage experimenting. And when you lessen that and when you go back to the way things were done over 10 years ago where there was less variety and less customization, you're literally taking away things from the player. You're taking two steps back. Players of all kinds enjoy the customization right and uh, the question is how do you balance that it's very very simple keep your simplicity give your give your perk one or two abilities and that's it if a person doesn't want to use their lethals and their tacticals you can either refer back to to pick 10 or they have to choose a lethal and a tactical or they can only exchange that with weapon attachments like for instance you don't like lethals and tacticals well you can't get perks but guess what you can get attachments on your weapons or whatnot right something like that and that is in a nutshell guys that is overall what has made Call of Duty the juggernaut that it is today well I don't even want to say the juggernaut that it is today because Call of Duty today is not like what Call of Duty used to be. Call of Duty is what I refer to classic Call of Duty run, uh, you know, first person arcade, first person shooter Call of Duty is everything Black Ops 4 and previous. So let's just say from Call of Duty 4, the original Modern Warfare, up until Black Ops 4. I will even go as far as to say that, uh, that uh, in terms of what we got with Modern Warfare 2019, Black Ops Cold War, and then Vanguard, honestly, Cold War was actually the most arcadey of the three because of the map design still retaining a certain level of basic simplistic map design, even though it was, uh, it was a little bit more, uh, maps were a little bit larger than what we got in previous Treyarch games or whatnot. But, uh, but at the same time, it was very much a run and gun t type of shooter in Call of Duty. And it still retained a decent amount of what Call of Duty was. Now, did that game have problems? Absolutely. There's no doubt. I, you know, it's a Cold War, unfortunately, I'm not very fond of it. Uh, but in terms of the last three Call of Duties, there's a reason why I played Cold War more than the other ones. And that's because of the overall design of the game that did take elements from what classic Call of Duty was. And it blended a few new elements as well instead and 
overall, at the end of the day, I think that's one of the reasons why Cold War didn't really didn't achieve its potential because it took a little too much from what other Call of Duties did. Well, particularly Modern Warfare 2019. It had Modern Warfare 2019's a little bit of that DNA in its uh, in its system, um, which ultimately, uh, in my opinion, was not very much a good thing. But but it is what it is. So all in all, if you actually had to, in one word, define what makes a good Call of Duty, it's very simple. Simplicity. Simplicity is that word. But anyway, I've uh, gone on for over 15 minutes. Let me know down in the comment section what you guys think in terms of uh, what makes a good Call of Duty. What is it specifically for you that got you into Call of Duty in the first place? What made it addictive? How did you start? All that kind of stuff. Let it be known down in the comment section. I'm really curious to know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.